Welcome on NWIP Daily. Joe Giglio with you. Appreciate everyone who subscribes, follows the podcast, WIP Daily. And of course, as you're watching right now, or you could be watching, is our YouTube page, 94WIP. Uh, we do our video podcast. Tucker Bagley with me. He's going to jump on in a few minutes. And today I want to make the case to the Phillies to, to do something different as we approach the trade deadline. So the Phillies win last night. They're playing really good baseball. Beat Arizona last night, extra innings. And, you know, this team has now reached 500. And I, I think the wild card thing is kind of settling in here. We're starting to figure out a little bit more who the contenders are. Arizona, LA, I think one of those teams will be in. And then it's about the other two spots. The Giants have jumped up. The Marlins haven't fallen back. And then there's kind of the Phillies and the Reds and the Mets are in a, you know, a bad situation. But the Phillies have a good chance to, to do a similar thing to last year and find their way to one of those spots. But as we get close to the trade deadline, it's like, all right, pitching, pitching, pitching. And the fifth starter spot is an anchor for this team. It has held them down all year. And it's where I think everyone is going to assume they're going to make a trade for. And they probably will. But I have to say that there's an a, an idea out there that, that I hadn't thought about until it, the Phillies were kind of, kind of connected to this. That, man, it feels like it could be the ultimate zig while everyone else zags around baseball. If you have 22 contenders, let's just say that, that just use that number. Maybe it's closer to 20. But say 22 contenders for – you know, 12 total playoff spots, six in each league. They're all, they all need pitching. I mean, they all need pitching and everyone's going to be fighting for, for those guys. And I don't know if the top guys will even be in the market. Like, are the Guardians really going to put Shane Bieber out there? I don't know. Are, you know, the, the Brewers going to do what they did last year with Hader and, and put Burns on the market, even though they're in the race? I don't know. I mean, that would change things. But there's a real chance that it's 22 teams fighting for a bunch of fourth and fifth starters. I mean, maybe Marcus Stroman's the best guy and he's kind of really like a number three, but like that could be the trade market. So it's a very difficult market to go get a starting pitcher. So a couple days ago, MLB.com article on the St. Louis Cardinals, worst team in the National League right now, biggest disappointment in baseball. They're even worse than the Mets. I mean, they are terrible. In a terrible division, they can't even get near the top. And the idea was they should trade Paul Goldsmith, the reigning NL MVP. And the Phillies were named as one of those teams that could go after Paul Goldsmith. At first, I'm like, come on, Phillies need a pitcher. But then you think about it, and I think there's a real case to be made the Phillies should go get Paul Goldsmith, should trade for the reigning NL MVP, and should use their resources on another bat versus just a fifth kind of starter. And let me lay some out. We'll bring Tucker on to get his case. So, look, Paul Goldsmith's not a good player. He's a great player. We're talking about a future likely Hall of Famer. I think he's kind of on that borderline right now, but he's pushing towards – the Hall of Fame, won the NL MVP last year, a great defensive player at first base. Adding him would almost like be bringing back Reese Hoskins, but 30% better or so at the plate and worlds better in the field, like a souped up gold glove version of Reese Hoskins. You know, So the lineup, which is on fire right now, could really, you could make a case to be the best lineup of baseball. And I was just kind of jotting down what it could look like. You can move these guys around almost any way you want. But the Phillies could roll out some sort of lineup of Schwarber, Goldschmidt, Harper, Castellanos, Turner, Real Mutu is on fire right now, Stott, Bohm, Marsh. I mean, one through nine, I don't think you're going to find a better lineup of baseball. And if you find one, you're not finding more than a couple. I and mean, that is an incredible lineup of depth. You know, the Padres lineup has four amazing players at the top, but then it, it kind of sputters off towards the end. Dodgers have a lot of, you know, good guys at the top. Again, it kind of sputters a little bit towards the end this year. You know, you go to – the Blue Jays, you know, the Yankees are, don't have a great offensive team. You know, the Rangers have the best offensive baseball right now. I would take the Phillies line of player for player with Goldschmidt with the Texas Rangers. That's how good the offense would be. So you, you have that aspect to it where it would just soup up this offense to a crazy level. The other thing, and, you know, Goldschmidt is having, I would say, a really good season. Not quite as great as he had last year, but still really good. I mean, Paul Goldschmidt has 11 home runs. And you look right now. Even after the offensive barrage the Phillies have been on, and their offense has really started to get going, especially JT in Arizona, the Phillies only rank 20th in baseball right now in home runs. You go back to last year, they ranked 6th in home runs. A big part of the reason the Phillies were as good as they were last year is they hit a lot of home runs. I mean, it just it wins you games. It, it erases mistakes. On a night where you're not doing much, like I was at the game a couple weeks ago and they beat the Tigers one nothing. They won on a home run by Schwarber as a leadoff hitter in the first inning. So... You know, home runs are difference makers. It's like the big play in football. You, it's really hard to score a lot of runs consistently without home runs. They've been getting more of them lately, but still only 20th in home runs. And 
you know, if there's one thing about this team and this season and, and their power outage, relatively speaking, that I, I think has been under talked about or not talked about enough, it's Bryce Harper. I, you know, I, I don't know when the power is coming back after Tommy John came back really fast. He has three home runs, slugging percentage down considerably from what we're used to, what he's put up in his career. Doesn't seem like he's got the carry on the fly balls that he typically does. Hit the ball hard still, but maybe it's a year with Bryce off the Tommy John where he's going to hit 12 or 15 home runs, hit 25 or 30 home runs, you know, based on the games he plays. So they might not hit a lot of home runs this year outside of Kyle Schwarber. You add Paul Goldschmidt, it's another 30 home run guy to the lineup that can kind of help get them back there. So you have that. And then you have the idea of, the future of the position in Philadelphia. Like, Reese Hoskins a free agent coming off an ACL. I don't know if he's going to be back next year. My guess, and my guess the whole time, is he's not because the Philly is kind of a logjam of DH types. Goldschmidt would give them a one-year stopgap. So he's got a year and a half left on his contract. So Paul Goldschmidt would be here the rest of this year to help him try to win a World Series and next year. And the Phillies kind of figure out long-term or first base. And, you know, I thought by now, or I think the Phillies maybe were hoping by now, this far into the season, Alec Bohm's bat would take a leap to establish himself. I think he's been fine defensively at first base when he's played. But to establish himself as kind of the future first baseman here so you can maybe move on from Reese without worrying about the position. Nothing about Alec Bohm's bat this year has told me first base. The glove's been fine. I think he could play first base probably even better than third, you know, adequately over there. I, I'm not seeing a guy that could hit like a first baseman. So, yes, the idea of Bryce Harper playing first and all that is still on the table, and I think he could do that. And, listen, this idea you know, would certainly limit the Phillies defensively. It would force them to put Bryce at DH all of the season. It would force them to keep Castellanos in right field and Schwarber in left the rest of the season. But, guys, they made the World Series doing this last year. They made the World Series last year – with a poor defense in the outfield, with Bryce Harper DHing. This would be like last year, but with Trey Turner, who's obviously turned it around a little bit the last couple of weeks and is, is getting closer to you know league average play for the season offensively. But it would be like last year, but with Trey Turner, like last year, but with Goldschmidt instead of instead of Reese Hoskins. I mean, you're improving your defense, you're improving your offense. And I don't think we could downplay how tremendous of an offensive player Paul Goldschmidt is. Like, so Cassianos is having a good season for the Phillies. I think he's their all-star right now. Schwarber's got 18 home runs. Schwarber's starting to slug a little bit. Turner's turning around. All that. Bryce has been good. Not, not great, but good. The minute Paul Goldschmidt walked in the door, if he did, he'd be the Phillies leader. Like, you, you put him on the team right now, 382 on base, by far the number one on the team. 138 OPS, OPS plus, number one on the team, even better than Cassianos. 871 OPS better than anybody on the team. Like he'd be their best player. The minute he walked in here, he's never won a championship. He's been a tremendous player. The Cardinals might actually want to do this now. And we'll bring Tucker in here to give his thoughts on all this, but it would cost one of the Phillies big pitchers. I mean, they'd ask for Andrew Painter. I mean, there's no question in my mind. The Cardinals would ask for that. They have no young pitching. They have no pitching period. And they're a team that really has no future with pitching. So the Cardinals, it's almost like a total zig where everyone's zagging. Everyone's going to try to trade a position player for a pitcher. You know, prospects like that for, for a pitcher. The Phillies could trade a pitcher, a young pitcher, for a position player. You know, would they take Mick Abel and other stuff? I, I don't know. I mean, they, they may just say it's got to be Andrew Painter, but the, the package to me is less important right now than just the idea. Like trading for Paul Goldschmidt, trading for the reigning NL MVP, I, Tucker, I think it would make the team better than if they just got a regular fifth starter. Like I mentioned Drew Smile the other day when I was trying to guess what Dabrowski might do. Now, he'd help, right, because the fifth starter here is terrible, and, and he's he's decent. But what makes the team a better baseball team, Paul Goldschmidt or a fifth starter kind of guy? This Goldschmidt idea came out of nowhere, but I, I think there's something here. I think when you look at it and, you know, what's interesting, and, and you know, there's an interesting note the other day. I think Todd Zalecki asked Dave Dombrowski about adding a fifth starter. Hey, you know, what are you thinking about the back end of the rotation? You think about adding somebody? And – Dombrowski pretty much bluntly said, listen, we're in a better situation than a lot of other teams. We have teams calling us about our guys, calling about Christopher Sanchez, seeing if they can add people you know, down in our system to their rotation. So it's not really going to be a robust market. It's certainly going to be a seller's market when it comes to pitching. And the way baseball's kind of gone this year, like there are a lot of top pitchers. Aaron Nolan, Zach Wheeler aren't 
you know, the only top line pitchers who are struggling. Go look at Sandy Alcantara, what he's doing after a, a dominant 2022. He's got an ERA north of five. Um, and, and there are a lot of guys, Shane Bieber, you know, kicking steps back. There are a lot of, you know, big name pitchers who are struggling this year. And with the pitch clock, with the new shift change, I wonder if this is coming a, a little bit like football where you almost have to load up on offense where defense and, and pitching is secondary and certainly you need it and having guys who can get shut down innings and, you know, go seven scoreless like, like Ranger Suarez did last night is certainly something that's important. But I think with the way the new rules have changed, I, I wonder if there's a world where teams start focusing all their resources on offense and, and you know, you can get out ahead of the curve here if you add someone like Paul Goldschmidt, who you mentioned, I mean, he's got an MVP vote. It's like the last seven years in a row. And you add him, I mean, one through six in your lineup would be serious contenders for, for silver sluggers at, at their position with Turner and Schwarber and Harper and Castellanos, Romuto. You add him. I mean, it, it would be an unbelievably deep lineup. And you think back to how they lost the World Series a year ago, and I know everyone points to Jose Alvarado, but their bats really struggled. Really, from game four where they got no hit, game five, they struggled with men on base, and, and game six, you have the leadoff homer by Kyle Schwarber and, and not much else. Adding more consistency to the lineup, adding someone with power, because right now your, your cleanup hitter is, you know, has, I think, two or three home runs. The guy who was hitting cleanup before him and Nick Castellanos, I think, has about seven or eight. Adding someone like Paul Goldschmidt would really add another dynamic to this lineup that they've been missing all season would certainly have more of an impact than just adding a guy who can take the ball every fifth day and then come playoff time probably isn't even, like think what they did to the fifth starter last year. Kyle Gibson pitched like three mop up innings the entire month of October. That point, that point is interesting because like, as you think about the rest of the season, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, they, how are they going to make the playoffs? You got to make the playoffs first. Okay. Well, that's true. So they have to figure out a way to make the playoffs. But if the Phillies believe, if you believe that this recent turnaround, and I'm not worried about Ranger Suarez. He's shown us enough here in Philadelphia for years. I, he's out the Rangers part of this thing. If the Phillies believe Taiwan Walker is is turning into and, and kind of rounding back in a four, just fourth starter form, what Tucker just said there is absolutely spot on. Like the, the guy they trade for to be a five, whoever that is, Drew Smiley. I mean, just throw a name out there. I mean, there's like whatever name's going to pop up. Like this year's Noah Syndergaard. He barely will get on the field in the playoffs, assuming they make the playoffs. Paul Goldschmidt will be in a major part of it. Like he'll be batting second in the lineup or whatever they put him and playing first base every single inning of the postseason. The objective for the Phillies when this year started was to win the World Series. And if if I'm if we're fighting between go get an ace level pitcher or go get Paul Goldschmidt, that's a different story. I mean, then okay, yeah, I mean. Yeah, the ace level pitcher. I wanted Carlos Rodon last year. Phillies went with Noah Syndergaard. Like that's a different story. That guy can make a big impact in October. But if if the deadline this year is going to be, well, I'll just patch it together with Drew Smiley, Phillies might make the playoffs. But I don't know if it's going to push them over the hump to win a World Series. Paul Goldschmidt could push you over the hump to win a World Series. I understand the push is going to be for pitching. Every team's push is going to be for pitching. I'm not sure. And the MLB.com article went into like the teams that could trade for Paul Goldschmidt. I'm not sure if any of them are actually going to do it. it. It's a very strange kind of position for the Cardinals. Reigning NL MVP, a lot of teams have something at first base or they have expensive payrolls or it's hard to like shoehorn it in. The Phillies have shown they'll shoehorn it all. They shoot shoehorn bats in here for years. This is the franchise that moved Reese Hoskins to first base for Carlos Santana. This is the franchise that had Bryce Harper DH all last year, made the World Series on a torn elbow. So, like, what's what's four more months of Bryce DHing and Schwarber in left field? I mean, they, they did this last year. I, I think the Goldschmidt idea is one that fits the Dave Dombrowski, like, hey, big fish, superstar kind of players, blue chip guys. I, I love the idea. And the defensive improvement would be vast. He's a great defensive player. I know pitching is is necessary. They need to find something in that fifth starter spot. But if Paul Goldschmidt's available – the Phillies need to pursue this. And I really believe adding Paul Goldschmidt to this lineup would make them the best lineup in top to bottom in the National League. If you have that, you have a chance to win every single night. And in the postseason, they would be a nightmare for opposing pitchers to try to navigate two times through the order. Forget three, but just two. 
Go get Goldie. I, 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 the more I think about this, the more I love the idea. Philly's back to 500 before they play the finale in Arizona. Adding Paul Goldsmith to this thing would be a major move, and I endorse it. Go get him, Dave Dabrowski. Thanks for watching here on the 94 WIP YouTube page, and, of course, following WIP Daily, wherever you get your podcast. Back tomorrow. We'll talk soon.